so I thought that this sort of video also uh, because of its length it required um, you know it's fair share of comments and um, I do apologize if my um, my voice is not exactly very good and very audible um, during the tutorial as well it's just um, go I'm catching a cold here at the moment uh, since win winter is about to come <laughs> Uh, winter is about to come, Game of Thrones winter is about to come. Um, so here as you can see I'm just basically uh, modeling uh, um, all of the wood uh, compartments that serve to make the, uh, the future extension uh, floor on, on, the, on the third floor and as well as the bathroom so and what you see here is that I'm exploding those um, you know I'm downgrading the columns so that they lose their properties as well um, and as you can see I take a lot of dimensions you know I probably should use the survey tool to take those dimensions but you know uh, it's just uh, sometimes you know different modeling mindset just pop in when you're modeling and so you know sometimes the reason why you use a tool versus another tool is not exactly well defined it just depends on how you feel things um, you know I could have just used the survey tool in that instance and for example you might see in a lot of places instead of using the construction line you know I, you know, I tend to draw lines but the construction uh, construction lines are very good because they, it creates this automatic folder and it makes sure that all the, the lines you use as guidelines for construction is blue so it's very efficient and good to use that and in the past I used to use that so if you look at the past projects that I used to do uh, I used to use that a lot but I, you know because I was limiting the, t the amount of time that I was going to use that uh, I I kind of slowly lost the habit or you know decreased the habit and so now I, you know if I just need a line I just draw a line and I can delete the line later on before when I had the construction I would just leave the, all the construction lines on turn off and turn off you know turn on and turn off the layers um, the layers if I wanted to see the construction line anyways um, so back on the stairs uh, the stair you know that first element of the stairs part that you cannot see on this tutorial um, but um, it's um, it's the part that I was saying that on the previous tutorial is kind of broken so um, but it's you know it's fairly straightforward thing and so when I'm modeling sometimes I notice that you know in AutoCAD lines are not exactly clear so what is one line what does it say what is it so if if you zoom into an element and you see two lines which are supposed to say one line then it's almost inaccurate and this is sometimes the problem that I have with AutoCAD or let's say 2D drawing is the fact that um, sometimes lines you know if the more if if the lines are not if there's a tiny offset in between the line the second line might mean something else you know so in this example for example um, the stair the stair was not exactly um, you know in different views for example the floor plan the elevation and the section views uh, there's always some minute amount of discrepancy somewhere that makes so you know uh, it, that makes part of understanding the drawings slightly inaccurate um, so this is why the beauty of uh, 3d modeling and it, it's 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 interesting and uh, because you know for a person like me who let's say it's not exactly all the time familiar with you know let's say building terms construction methodology and stuff like that uh, at this early stage in my life um, it allows me to visually see what I'm doing and at least provide me with some degree of, of understanding like for example I'm thinking to myself I'm drawing this floor you know and I'm, of course I've understood the plans but I'm drawing it intuitively and suddenly I realize well it's not exactly right and I see it in, in front of me because it's too small and so I just understand there's something wrong with it and then I just fix it because I, I just know it intuitively I have to increase it but in 2D it's in 2D modeling it's a bit different you know you the modeler you just have to know everything about tiny levels of expression that you want to do now there's beauty in that as well because you're the master of what you know 
um, but in the same way that you can model in 3D as well, you would be the master of what you know in 3D. Um, so I'm just deleting uh, the dimensions because I, I saw that I had too many extra dimensions in instead of using the survey tool once again. Um, so what else? very critical to always check things and dimensions um, because there's so many levels of information that you don't want to get lost but if you get one thing right you know you know that you can make one step forward with certainty uh, so this is the problem I was referring to in the last tutorial where I was saying that the walls are getting flat and you just have to change the normal and I couldn't figure it out and in this one I somehow figured it out and, and it's just interesting how these things work Okay, so here obviously, it, you know, the program crashed. And I think I saved that file as well in the GitHub so that it can be downloaded at that exact moment and why the door crashed, I don't know. Okay, um, so here now, you know, placing laws has become a lot more easier now that, you know, I figured that little bug in my mind. <laughs> it's not a bug in the computer this time, it's a bug in my mind, a bug of understanding. Yeah, it looks like uh, when I will get to the annotation part, I'll be doing a lot of translation to understand what some of the various specifications exactly mean. So, I have one particular thing to say about this area, is that right now, I seem to be doing a lot of 2D replication, you know. But what I could have simply done is what I did slightly later on in that you will see on the tutorial where I just copy this whole thing this whole DWG or AutoCAD import and then rotated it and placed it into appropriate view and started working with it from there directly um, you know I just copied it and rotated it into the right position and worked for it, from it directly so that has its own advantages as well um, but since this tutorial is also for the purpose of demonstration and free flow and all these things um, I take you know the you know I decide to model in different ways that just come to mind because it's important to show all the different varieties of ways that you can uh, you, you know uh, have a problem and think of a solution think of an approach think of a way to find it so the idea is how do you lay out all the different possibilities this is why 2D workflow is important and 3D workflow is important as well. A combination also of 2D and 3D workflow is important. And now a combination of the three styles of workflow is important. And so this is why I think that uh, uh, this, you know, uh, FreeCAD has this interesting way of being, um, uh, what's the word? rewarding in that sense because it has a way of making you feel happy in 2d and making you feel happy in 3d of course the 2d level is not like okay see here I am uh, I am uh, copying the, the uh, those elements and placing them into position but then I realized well there's too many things that don't fit well something's off and again this highlights the fact that sometimes the 2d is not exactly right so what happened I'm not exactly sure and it causes you to cross check everything and this is what caused me to actually um, have to copy the whole thing because I was like oh I'm sure I copy you know I'm sure I retraced over this thing exactly the way it's supposed to be so what am I missing here that I made a mistake somewhere along the line that something does not click and here in this on this front you can see that um, certain things were not fitting right you know there was an offset of about uh, 40 uh, centimeter which is about the thickness of a wall and I just could not understand it 
uh, um, but um, because this is 3D, you have the ability to see and uh, and and, and uh, immediately immediately spot these kinds of differences. So you know, I'm still wondering: Are my beams exactly the same thickness? You know, because something is off. Something is throwing me off here. Uh, I'm not not exactly sure what was. So I finally figure it out, and so I decide to move on now. So now this is the beauty of it. So now I can just create this uh, wood structures directly. So I could have used this method when I first uh, uh, created the, the wood structure that supports the second floor system, the third the third floor system, for example. You know, but I didn't. Now again, uh, the the cover of the parapet wall for example was not exactly aligned to the right placement and this as well did not make quite sense to me so that's why you have to um, measure and measure and measure and compare and compare and compare uh, because there's the information that's given to you it could be flaw in some ways I mean even the best people who do things can sometimes make slight mistakes uh, uh, not because it, they are trying to do mistakes but just because it's human nature to, to make an error you know and so but you who looks at a drawing you have to be able to spot that kind of mistake which is not really a mistake in a way you know and understand that okay that's not really a mistake that's that kind of detail and then there's the real mistake where you know uh, things are really off the, the, the walls are not exactly right you know the elevation says something and, this, and the plant says something else and obviously I'm building the roof again here it's looking good And here, for example, again, I'm modeling everything because I want to see what the whole model looks like. But, and this, this is, you know, I can remember this part in the modeling. I was struggling with trying to model what I thought was right versus what the model was saying. For example, those, those, um, those, um, uh, uh, wood supporting, uh, supporting those I'm not sure if it's a two by four or whatever you know those wood supporting the roof right there I could have remodeled it and made it fit very well myself but because some in some places you have this you know tolerances you know this minute gap of space this tolerances and in some places you didn't have the tolerances so it, it you know I'm the kind of person that I like a bit of consistency when I model so if, you know if I see tolerances all through I want to see you know then I understand that that's the intent of the project because it's true that in life you have tolerances but if you're the kind of designer who does not do tolerances then and here again I'm testing the roof corrugated thing and it's not exactly working well because you know I have to find a way to play with the rotation and, and the normal at the same time and it does not quite make sense yet um, so I have to figure out again but um, here I have to move on and I just decided to use a simple paint uh, panel like uh, in the section itself just to represent it temporarily and uh, I convert wood to a trans semi transparent to show uh, and, uh, that that wood is going to be um, the future installment so I think that's the end of the tutorial. So uh, that's about it. It's just, it just relooped. So I'm going to st stop the tutorial right here. Until then, see you into the next tutorial.